Hello, I'm John Strabla, a Principal Product Manager here at Couchbase, and I am focused on the eventing service. Today's session will cover automating bucket to key space conversions. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so this discussion will be focused on converting data in your buckets to bucket scopes and collections, which are called key spaces. The good news is that the Couchbase server 7.0 is revolutionary. It adds these two new layers, scopes and collections, to your buckets. And this allows you to have purpose-driven grouping to lower your total cost of ownership. But although upgrading from Couchbase 6 to 7 is seamless, it merely maps a bucket name to a single key space, becomes bucket name .default, .default. The burning question here is, how can we efficiently reorganize your data to achieve better resource utilization and actually lower your TCO? The solution, with an inventing-based migration tool, you can quickly and efficiently Reorganize your bucket-based data to take full advantage of scopes and collections. Here we have 6.x on the left and 7.x on the right. As you can see, after a migration, we merely map our buckets into bucket.default.default. We don't get any benefit of reorg, but this allows most of your applications to keep working. Ideally, we might want something like multi-tenancy. So as you can see, we, we can keep our buckets and we could possibly break them into customers, customer one, customer two, et cetera, et cetera. Today, I'm gonna to focus on taking a bucket where we have a large data lake um, of documents and the documents have a property in them called type. And we're gonna map them the, into individual collections. So let's talk about buckets real quick. They're heavyweight resources compared to collections, which are lightweight resources. We can think of a bucket as a virtual machine and a collection as a process. So I did some tests on an AWS cluster. I created 30 buckets. I loaded each bucket with 50,000 documents and I threw an index on them. So the CPU utilization after I did this and let everything in idle was 7.5%. Now in the collections world, I create one bucket, I make 30 collections, and I put the 50,000 documents in each of the collections, also build an index on each of the collections, and the CPU utilization is only 1.3%. I have the same amount of data, but my systems are in idle, and the collections paradigm is running more efficiently. The key takeaway here is that you can use smaller, less expensive cloud instances and you can even take advantage of AWS burstable instance types. So if you were only running peak compute for a few hours a day, you can save some real dollars. Okay, so when we migrate from buckets to collections, we can do it several ways. We can do offline migrations using nickel scripts or backup and restore. We can do online migrations using XDCR or eventing. We're gonna talk about the eventing um, techniques today. So one of the things about eventing, some items I wanna talk about is it works on massive data sets, billions. It can work without an index. It can work without nickel. And it has the ability to migrate your data when you're constrained by limited resources. It's also fast. It runs parallel using our database change protocol. So I have some references that you can check um, about the prior page. I won't go into detail into them. Uh, however, they will help you get focused on what it is you need to do when you plan out your migrations. Okay, we're gonna do some data movement via an eventing function. So this is a prerequisite to kind of understand what we're going to be doing before we actually run our demo. This is a simple six line eventing function. It just makes sure that it has a document type property of airport. It will copy that document into a bucket alias, and then it will delete 
from another bucket alias. The second bucket alias is the same as the source of the mutations. The first bucket alias is the target of where we want to reorganize things to. So the source of the mutations is the listen to location, travel sample, default, default. Uh, the next is the eventing scratch pad. And then we have a function name, which is required. And we deploy from everything because we want to process everything. We need some settings, both in read, write mode. Okay. One, so that we can delete from the source. And the second bucket binding so that we can actually copy to another collection. We can improve this function by adding two global constants. And we do this in eventing in 7.x via the constant alias. So what I'm doing here is I'm only going to copy and I'm not going to delete because I want to verify that I actually moved all my data first. It's a good safety thing to add. Furthermore, we can do other stuff. We could uh, drop the type if we're mapping our collections um, uh, one to one by the source type, we no longer need a type or we could leave the type. It's, it's an option. So we just add one more constant and we're ready to go. For our first demo, we're gonna move one type only, but we're gonna need to set some stuff up. So let's um, go to our sample buckets and create a sample collection. And eventing also will need an eventing scratch, scratch base. So I like to call it RR100 for resident ratio 100. And the eventing scratch base can be shared across multiple eventing functions. Um, we're going to also have to add a scope because I'm not going to use the default collection. And I'm going to name it eventing and then we're going to add a collection to the scope and i'm going to call it meta data yes so right now we've got two buckets we've got our travel sample we've got our eventing scratch pad but we also need a target someplace to write our data to so once again we're going to add a bucket and let's make this quite small again and we're going to call it my bucket and we're going to add the bucket. Then we're going to go to scopes and collections and we're going to add something to my bucket. We're going to call it um, my scope. Such an exciting name. Now we're going to migrate something called airport. So we have to add one more thing. So we got to say airport. Okay. So when we have these, these collections, we can open this up and we can see we're in my bucket, my scope, and the collection airport. Okay, but we do have three buckets here and we have a source bucket, which will have some scopes and collections. And as you can see, 31,591, that's what we're going to be moving. We're going to be moving the default, 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 um, which is travel sample, default, default. So now we're ready to go to eventing. We've got everything set up that we need, and, but we do need to import an eventing function, okay? So let's import our first sample that we showed before. And we could just as easily have added an eventing function, but it's easy and we can make mistakes. So uh, I have a name, I have a listen to source, I have my eventing scratch pad that we created and we can put, we're gonna like deploy across everything. So we're going to see the entire change history. Um, now we have two bindings, they're bucket aliases. So we have an A dot source, which is the same as the listen to location it is a binding to travel sample default, default in a read write mode. And then we have A dot air underscore airport, which is a binding to my bucket my scope airport. Both are in read write because we're going to need read write. Um, as you can see, we're going to get our data from our mutation when we replay the history subject to dedo. And if the doc type is airport, we're going to write it to this bucket alias, which is our target where we want to migrate things to. And then we're going to immediately delete it from the source, which is another bucket aliases. So let's go ahead and go back to eventing and let's just fire this thing up. 
And the deployment of our functions take about 15 seconds. So I'm gonna just pause this very short. Okay, so we should have just deployed and it will be almost instantaneous. Oh, 3,591 documents streamed through, um, but we can go take a look at our buckets and I'm going, oh, 1,968. Hopefully these were airport. So let's go take a look at our documents. We have to go into the proper scope and collection and there we go, they were airport. So we actually moved our data. Now, the interesting thing is we also deleted our data. So if we look at this under scopes, we'll see that, oh, that did drop. I expected we started with 31591 and we dropped by the amount that we moved. So this did work, okay? And now we're going to move on to um, another uh, demo, but let's um, go back to buckets and let's um, kind of, let's kind of start over. We're gonna drop clean things out and my bucket, um, I don't want to recreate it. So let's just um, turn on flush, save our changes. And we are going to take a look at stuff and we're going to just flush. So that's now empty. And we will load our third example when this gets done, obviously, um, eventing. So let's just, um, this is now undeployed because we um, blew away something it relied on. So it auto un undeployed. So now what we're going to do is we, we're, since we want to start out with some good data again, we're going to have to reload the travel sample. It comes in and let's do an import of a function. And I happen to know this is the one that I want. And this will map up to the very last example that we just covered. Um, the difference is that we have our three constants here, okay? We're still doing airport, but we're only gonna copy. We're not gonna delete and we're not gonna drop the type. Well, hey, why don't we drop the type, okay? So we, we control it through those, those features and this is the exact same data that we saw before. And um, now we're ready to run. We don't want to run the first function. We run, run the second function that we just did and we'll deploy it. And once again, it'll take about 15 seconds. So we'll do a quick pause and we're up and running. Um, and once again, this will be fairly instantaneous. And the only difference is that we will see that we have the same amount of data in there. However, because of the, that constant, we did not delete from here, okay? Okay, what if we have several types? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We um, basically just replicate this section, one, two, three, four more times to do five types. And of course, we have to replicate the airport to do an airline to the airline and the hotel to do the hotel and the landmark to do the landmark and the route to the, do the route. Okay, so let's see how all this works. Okay, once again, we're starting with a full travel sample. Um, my bucket actually has a few other target collections. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I want to open that up. Not only does it have airport, but it has airline, hotel, landmark, and route, okay? So let's um, do our quick import. I happen to know what I wanna use. And so we'll see that uh, after this particular bucket alias, we have airline, hotel, landmark, and route. Then we have our constants. And our code looks exactly like we talked about before, except that we added four new blocks. If we deploy this, it will operate on airport, airline, hotel, landmark, and route. So we'll wait about 14 seconds for this to deploy. I won't pause this time and it'll rip through the um, data sets. And if you want um, eventing to actually work faster, um, you would up the number of workers, um, typically match the number of VMs, and it will run faster and faster. So we're done.
Let's take a look at our buckets, and this is nice. We see 31,591. If I look at our scopes and collections, that matches this number here. We go back to our buckets, and um, let's look at our scopes and collections, expand that out, and we can see 24K into route, about 4K into landmark, less than 1K into hotel, 187 airlines, and the original uh, 1,968 for airport that we previously saw. Um, so we can go ahead and undeploy that. We don't need that running. And we can take a peek at the documents. My bucket, my scope route, airline, airport, hotel, landmark. Can this be automated? Um, yeah, it can be. Um, I think you probably saw that, you know, for five types, you know, I, I had to write a lot of code. It seemed a little redundant between the code and the settings. And let's say if I had 10, even 20, um, it might be easy to make a mistake. So automation. I wrote a simple Perl script, came to the rescue for me. And what we want to do is we want to show um, a series of questions that the script asks. It just says, hey, what's the source bucket you want to convert? It always assumes default default, like you just did a 6.x to a 7.x upgrade. Ask for your password, username and password. Asks um, what the IP address is of your cluster. I happen to be running on the local host. Um, and then what the default bucket and scope you send things to. So it'll be bucket.scope.type. That's what we're trying to shoot for. Remember, we made like airport and hotel at the end of that. And then your eventing storage metadata, the number of workers for performance. We were running with one on everything. Um, you can do higher performance by default. I put eight. And then whether or not you want to probe with a random sampling, your source bucket determine the set of types and the, the amount of um, buckets to probe and the randomly probe, I should say. And the estimated number of types in the bucket, you have to have greater than or equal to the number of the types that uh, you're trying to extract. So I go through this and I just hit return, return, return. I accepted all the defaults and then it takes about 10 seconds and it scans through stuff. And you know, this little curl call to one of the rest endpoints in Couchbase. And then I end up um, piping it through a utility called JQ and I strip out what I want and I sort do a sort minus unique. And the neat thing is it found airline, airport, hotel, landmark, and route. Okay. Then it generated an eventing function that can be imported and it made a custom key pace uh, script. Okay. So why, why, why do I want that script? Okay. Let, let's take a peek. So in the custom script, it will make the eventing storage if it doesn't exist. These are CLI commands. There's three, make the bucket, make the scope and make the collection. It will also make all the, the target bucket and the target scope, and then it will make all the needed collections. Okay, nice. And finally, it will import the function that it just created. Now it can't exist. Um, so you have to delete an old one if you had it. Um, so it automates the whole thing. So all I have to do is run the Perl script and then show dot slash make custom key spaces and I'm golden. So let's move on to another demo. We are going to um, move 10 million documents that have 24 types and push them into collections. For this demo, we have 10 million documents. Um, as you can see, we have a five gig quota. So it's 100% memory resident right now. Um, so let's just take a look at um, what our documents look like. They're very tiny, uh, but every single document has a type um, T01 through T24, and they're fairly evenly distributed. So, and that's all we have in here, okay? And forget about our three samples that we've already done. Now, the beautiful thing about the script that was just written, um, hmm, no, it's called input. 
we had just upgraded from version six to version seven and it converted the bucket input to the bucket input dot underscore default dot underscore default for bucket scope collection. So we just put in input, same password, same host. Um, I'm going to send it to output dot reorg. Okay. Just give it the bucket and the scope. The collections will be based upon the type name. That's totally fine for my eventing scratch pad. Um, I'm going to give 12 um, workers. It's a little faster. I have a 12 core single node box doing everything. It's not a large cluster. And um, I'm going to probe the bucket. Uh, let's just probe. Uh, no, let's probe 50,000. 50, 1, 2, 3. And 30 is above 24. We're cool there. And we'll let this um, infer statement run. And it gets piped through JQ. And as you can see, we actually do have 24 types that were discovered. Fantastic. Um, before I run this particular script here, I'm going to adjust one thing. And the one thing I'm going to adjust is the size. Because I know that I um, this is 100 meg. That's 100 that's one gig, that is now uh, five gigs. So I'm making it the same size of a bucket as the um, input source. So I save this and um, when I run the script, it will actually import that function. So dot slash, oops, there we go. Shell dot slash, and we're going to town, we're running the script. And it's actually making all 24 collections. It did make the bucket first and then the scope, and we're done. So we don't see the uh, function in here. Got to refresh. There's no automatic refresh when you use the uh, rest endpoints to load, load the data. And um, now let's take a look at the settings. Okay. Nice uh, comment about what it's going to do. And if we scroll up a little bit, we have our bucket aliases, our source bucket, and then the alias for type 01, the alias for type 02, and so on and so on and so on. I'm glad I didn't have to create all these things. Um, and the same thing holds true of the eventing function itself. Um, this auto generator actually like prints out some interesting stuff about what the settings should be set to. And um, you know, it just replicates it. Looks really good. I'm happy. After all, that's why we have an automated tool. So um, let's, before we run it, remember this did make the other things. We said we wanted an eventing scratch pad. That's made. Now, um, out, out. It's not output, it's out, out. Okay, I misspelled output. No worries there. This is just a demo. Um, let's take a look at scopes and collections. So we've got out out dot reorg, and we have if I op open that up, we have a lot of empty collections. All right, so we're ready to fire it up and run. Um, so let's do go ahead and hit deploy. Remember, um, eventing takes about fourteen to fifteen seconds, um, depending on your system. It might be as long as eighteen per function to deploy. So. As this is um, setting up what it needs to run, um, we can uh, just wait. Okay, so it's done with 293,000. Two thirds of a million. And we've already processed one tenth of our data. Okay, now I am running a single node cluster. But one thing that you should keep in mind is that on a um, on a real cluster, let's see, I'm having a, there we go. Um, we have Showfast that uh, shows how performant eventing can be. If I had a beefy set of servers, six KV nodes for the data service and four eventing nodes, um, I could probably do this. Uh, almost 1.1 million documents shuffled and reorganized per second. That's pretty powerful. So let's go back. We're about um, almost half done. I'll pause this for a little while. We'll pick up when we're close to finishing. 
Okay, we're close to being done right now. So um, when this hits 10 million, that's it. Now, one of the things, the chart should show you the invocation rate, okay, as it's streaming through. It says 80K a second, um, not too shabby. Um, and when we hit 10 million, uh, the chart is actually delayed a little bit um, by 30 seconds. So it'll now start to taper off and go to zero as far as our rate, but we are complete. Everything is done. So let's go take a look at our buckets. Here we are for buckets. We have input 10 million, we have out, out 10 million, but of more interest is inside the uh, scopes and collections of out, out dot reorg. We have 416 K in each of our 40 buckets because it was evenly distributed. And I can go look at the documents in any one of these things. And every one of these things should be the same type, type 10, type 10. And this is in out, out, reorg type 10. Um, I'll just go ahead and undeploy this. There's no point in leaving it up and running. Um, and that is how you use eventing with a small Perl script to make an automatic bucket to collections generator. We didn't need nickel, we didn't need an index, and it ran fast. Thanks for your time. That concludes this session. But I do have some resources to share with you. Most um, important is the Perl script and also a small template that does the conversions. Um, there's a um, set of directions in here for converting travel sample. So, um, you know, feel free download this to run it. Um, and the PowerPoint, when this gets distributed, will also have a link to this. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your connect and it was a pleasure presenting.